Hello, I was asked to um, show how to get a blade for a wooden spoke shape uh, sharpened and ready to use. So I, uh, any excuse to buy a tool, I went out and picked this up on eBay, uh, about 30 bucks, a little bit more than I usually, I usually spend 20 on these, but um, so I, the only thing I've done so far, I, I waxed, I cleaned this up a little bit and waxed it and put a little oil in here. It was seized up when I got it. So I just um, oiled these to uh, um, make it easier to get the, the blade out. Um, this is kind of a transitional model of spoke shave where um, it has these um, nuts that adjust the blade height. So the blade has a, a thread on it. Um, moves up and down here. So I, I like these a lot. I find them very easy to adjust. So we're going to um, sharpen this. This is a, it's, it's in decent shape. It's a little rusted, um, but it still has a good edge. Uh, so I made this little jig. It's, it's very simple. It's just a piece of wood with two holes that this will fit in and a little V notch at the end. And we'll see. Um, I use this to kind of hold, hold the piece while I'm sharpening. So let's get started. Got that in there. Um, I'm going to start with some 60 grit. Actually, I'm going to start with 120 grit first because uh, this doesn't look too bad. This is an aluminum block. I'm just going to put some you know, 120 on here and the aluminum block is very uh, I like it a little bit. It's a little heavier than a wooden block, and uh, um, it, it's a nice, and it's it's a little tougher, but it's not quite as heavy as a steel block. So already, you know, we've taken a lot of the tarnish off this. I'm trying to get this as smooth as possible um, because the this is going to be the bearing surface that the wood rides on. When, when you're uh, using the spoke shave, it's, so this slides on the wood. So I try to get this as smooth as I can. There's always gonna be some tarnishing in here that I, I think it's easier to not um, go all the way and try to take that out. It's, a, it's usually pretty heavy. Um, sometimes, you know, you can always just take a little WD-40 and that can help. One thing I forgot to mention um, when I started was that this is not a flat blade. There's a there's a crown to it. Um, the spoke shave has a very small amount of crown going this way. So um, you, you want to be mindful of that. You don't. That's what makes it very hard to. You can use like a stone, but it's it's harder to use than than this way. Um, and it's already, you know, we've made good progress. You can always, it's already clean out to the tip. I'm just gonna do a little bit more. Maybe I'll hit it with a 60 grit real quick just to see what that'll do. Sometimes it can be too aggressive. It's gonna be nice, and then I'll switch over. I've got these Amazon twenty dollar for a set diamond stones.
right, this is getting pretty good. Um, you can see it's there's just that there is a little pitting in the middle of the blade, but I'm not worried about that. It's we've got a nice amount uh, by the edge. This is this blade is not perfectly straight across here, so I might before I go too far just. Straighten it up a little bit. Yeah, it's, it doesn't need a lot. Um, that does put a little land here, and I'm going to have to be careful of that when, when to get rid of that when I'm sharpening. It's just water. That was 400, 600, Um, all right, so that's pretty good. I'll get it with a 1200 real quick. And and you can see when I'm pushing, I'm kind of I'm going, I'm following the crown of the blade. You don't have to go really crazy in the parts that's like the edges off the blade. You really, you can focus just on the blade itself. All right. That's the easy part. Um, now we're going to work on here. So this is, um, this blade looks... Like it was forged with almost a hollow grind in it. You can see a little, what's called a fuller mark here. So I'm not going to worry too much about what's in here. Um, you know, I could take like a Scotch Brite or something and just clean that out. Just it's probably got years of gunk in here. Um, that's not too bad. But this isn't really an important part of the blade. It's just I'm just doing a little more housekeeping here than anything. All right. So now we're going to, this is, you know, you can still see some shininess on here. So that's good. Um, so I'm going to start. I have this next part. You can use a variety of things. Um, you can use a piece of wood wrapped in uh, Sandpaper. I, I got these little abrasive stones from Garrett Wade a long time ago. I use those and then also Easy Lap. Um, hone and stones are really handy. So I'm going to start with this. This one is rough. I think it's like 220 maybe. Um, and you can see I'll hold this in the wedge. It helps. And I'm just holding this flat that you can actually see the shiny part that there's just a, there's a, by holding this across here like this, that's kind of, that's setting the bevel. And I've got to sand away that, that little land I did when I, when I flattened it out like this, I created just this little bit of, a little flat along there and I've got to take care of this. So you can see how I'm, I'm kind of using my body to wedge this 
the blade up against the wooden stop and it gives me a lot of, it keeps it in one place. It moves a little bit, but these little stones are good. You can take a lot of material off pretty quick with them. And the main thing I'm looking at is to get rid of that land. I, I don't want, you got it for a sharp edge, you got to take care of that. And I'm just running this back and forth. Getting there. You can still see a little bit there. So you can also, if I wanted to, I could go with the block again, the 120. Um, obviously, the sharper it gets, the more carefully you have to be because this is a pretty decent sized blade. It's about three and a half, four inches. So as you get it sharp, you're, you know, it's a pretty decent sized thing you have to be careful of. And, you know, all draw knives and spoke shaves. It's getting there. Still. And sometimes, let's see, I've had a medium, I can try, and I just try different things to see how well they, they kind of bite against the steel. I don't know why, I should know why with having a career in metalworking, but some metal just grinds better with diamonds and some with sandpaper, I, I don't know. Um, So here I'm really just trying to, just moving these little stones back and forth, across here, um, keeping this flat. This is doing a pretty good job. The only thing that um, about these is that they're small, so you have to kind of clean them off a little bit more um, than a bigger diamond stone. And this is the part that can take a little while. The back is easy because it's so big and um, these posts aren't in the way, so it's really easy to get a big stone there. And this we're using a much smaller stone. Um, let's see. It's getting there, but there's still, well, it's starting to get sharp. Might go back and try. One of these abrasives again. It's a little bit more aggressive. The only thing with the abrasives, it's, it's this edge is gonna tear them up a little bit. When you go, if you're going back and forth, that eventually the sharper you get, the more it kind of cuts into the abrasive. So you might find yourself just going back and forth this way rather than this way. It's also safer to go this way in the long, back and forth this way in the long term just because the sharper it gets, the harder, the more likely it is to cut, your, to cut yourself. And pressure right on the, the tip of the blade where I want the metal to be removed. You can even, some steel, you can even do this with a file, like a soft 
or a fine style. Um, depending on how hard the blade is. This is really dangerous. This is actually probably not how you want to do it um, because the sharper it gets, the more, if you slip, you'll jam your hand into the sharp, the blade itself. So don't do that. All right, I'm getting a good burr on most of it. I'll go back to doing it the right way. Yeah, and you'll notice when I did the back, I didn't go all the way as far as I, you know, to, I stopped at the 12, uh, 1200 diamond. I, I'll go farther, but since this is going to have some rough work done to it, I'm, I'm going to have to take a pretty big burr off the back, so. Okay. All right, so I have a burr across the whole back. So that's good. So now I can start. I'm going to go with the, to the diamonds. And this is just, from here on out, this is just polishing in a lot of ways. This is just getting rid of the scratches from the two, that was a 220 abrasive um, stick there. So, you know, we've got this. Medium. Do a fine. Like I said, it's just from here on out, now that I have the burr there, this is just polishing, getting, getting rid of the scratches. Super fine. Yeah, these easy lap are really good. I, I highly recommend them. I, I forgot how much I paid. Maybe like 25 bucks or something, but they come in handy on a lot of smaller items. Um, you can really get into spaces and sharpen things that you couldn't normally do. And fine is, you know, this is super fine, so that's pretty good. I mean, I, after this, I could just, I could go straight to honing, depending on how I'm feeling. All right. You can use, like, like I said, you could use a little stick with, with a... Um, sandpaper on it. So now I've got a big burr on this edge, so I'm going to go and knock that off. But you can see that it's pretty, we've got a nice, we've got these two stripes of, this, these are the two flats. Yeah, that's getting pretty sharp. Um, so now I'm going to take the burr off. And as soon as I take that burr off, I know that's when I have to start really being careful, because this is going to this is going to be taking that burr off. It is going to be sharp. So, right. yeah, it's, it's getting sharp. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna go straight to. Um, uh, honing. I have a couple things I can I can use for that. Um, so one thing I can use if this was tougher, if I was doing this, I have this ceramic um, stone. A lot of times this is almost finer than super fine. I use this for you can use this for touching up. I use this a lot of times after I've used something to to kind of touch it up.
real quick. It's kind of a, all right. That's uh, time for honing. So uh, I basically have two things I can use. This round, this is just a three quarter inch dowel with some leather wrapped around it, or this is just a piece of wood with a with leather on one end for a, for a hone. Again, doing this, you got to be careful of that blade. You really want to know where your hands are, where your fingers are. Okay. It's got a pretty good polish on it. And now I will do up this side. might um, this one is harder so it's maybe wide enough to use a stone yeah so I have this which is a um, this is a 3,000 grit stone I might use that in my to this is just wide enough so I could actually you know, go across like this with it Polish it up. Yeah, this is actually working pretty good. These little doodads are hitting on there, so I'm just gonna go back to using the um, the handheld strop. There's a little burr on there, and I'm just trying to take that off. Again, being careful because that is getting sharp. Yeah, that's a, that's a decent sharpness. All right, so I think that's good. Yeah. And I just put it back in. You have to go back and forth. A couple turns on each side. If you go all the way with one, it'll jam. So now I've got pretty fine cut there. Maybe the thickness of a rule, a metal ruler. You could probably use a ruler to, to set that. Now I want to just try it out. It's pretty good. It's a pretty nice, it's a good, and I could probably get it finer maybe. I'm going against the grain there, so maybe backwards. Yeah. So yeah, I would say probably the thickness of a ruler, maybe a couple pieces of sandpaper and you'll be good to go. It's a good starting place and then you can adjust up and down based on what you need. All right, thanks a lot.